It's cute and I can't believe it came out amazing, but we're gonna talk about the little things that I could have changed. So if that's some content you would like to see, please continue to watch. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and in this video I'm gonna give you a quick pattern review to the pattern that we are doing also a sew along for which is Butterick 6901. All right now this is a complete pattern review. It's gonna be short, sweet and to the point and then we could go ahead and get over to the sew along but I am gonna remind you that there will be chapters put in this sew along simply because we are doing the sew along for both the vest as well as the shorts. Now, if you wanna do the pants, you can, the only difference is the length. It's just the length variation, so you could do that as well. Now, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Hello, ciao, guten tag, aloha, hola, konnichiwa, waguan, sambanani, salom, bonjour. If you're returning, you guys know what to do by now. Go get you something to drink, a quick snack. Come on back so we can go ahead and get into this video. Now, I will be putting concession stands in between this video because this video is long. So I'm gonna give you a caveat. That's why I'm putting chapters in this video so you can skip to wherever you need to go in this video, all right? So without further ado, and to keep this short, sweet, and to the point, let's go ahead and get into this pattern review. All right, so this pattern review is for both the um, vest as well as the shorts. Let's go ahead and talk about the pattern as well with the pattern description. So the pattern description for this pattern is a fully lined button front vest with tie ends at the back. That's the vest. Now the pants and shorts is just a length variation. The pants and the shorts has um, pleats in the front. It also has side seam pockets as well as an invisible side zipper. You can put the zipper on whatever size that you want. So this is that that is the complete pattern description for this pattern. Let's go ahead and talk about skill level. So the skill level for this pattern, I believe on the Simplicity website is rated as average. Do I feel this pattern is average? Absolutely, yes I do. Okay, now for me it was easy, but for someone who hasn't been doing welts or anyone that does not know how to fit pants, it could be average and time consuming for you. All right, so that's why I did the sew along. All right, let's move on over to Notion shoes. Now for the vest, there's four buttons is the only notion that you need. However, for the pants or the shorts, you will need a seven inch invisible zipper. Now in the sew along, you'll see that I used a longer zipper only because that's what's in my stash, okay? So I do have to buy some more zippers and buttons and all that good stuff, all right? So that is the description for, I'm sorry, that is the notions used for this pattern. Let's go ahead and talk about pattern pieces. Now, I'm not going to get into pattern pieces simply because you're gonna hear that in the sew along, but for the vest, you need four pattern pieces, pattern piece number one through four, and then for the, the shorts or the pants, you need a total of, I believe it's six pattern pieces, which are pattern piece number five through 10. So that's six pattern pieces. Let's talk about the pattern sizing. Skipping over the pattern pieces because you'll hear that in so long, let's talk about pattern sizing. Now for this pattern, it comes in two envelopes, I believe. It's six through, I think the first envelope is six to 14 and the second envelope is 16 to 24. I'll correct it on the screen if I'm incorrect on the sizing for the pattern envelope. The size that I cut for the vest, unfortunately, was a size 16. And then for the shorts, I cut a size 22 all right let's talk about modifications did i make any modifications yes i did i made the vest as a reversible vest which i love however i think when i measured i went by the sides that i knew i needed to cut but i did not measure the bust measurement which is why this vest will not close and it's open but i made the photos do what it do and make it look good now the vest is amazing. The only difference is I should have measured my bust measurement on tissue paper before cutting out, but I got so excited to do this um, so long, I did not do that. However, I did that for 
the pants. So I measured the waist and the hips and it fits flawless, okay? But when it came to the vest, I did not measure the bust measurement, went by what was on the tissue paper and it doesn't fit. Like, y'all see that? Like, we're not gonna even get one button fit. You see how that's squeaked? I'm not gonna even worry about it, but I am going to give this to a sibling whose bus measurement is 10 times smaller than mine, all right? <laughs> I know, I know what you guys are gonna say. Like, Rochelle, how did you not get a good fit? Hey, it happens sometimes, but the sew along is in its entirety and you could put it together with ease um, for sure. All right, let's talk about, did it look like the photos are the drawing on the pattern envelope? Yes, it does. Now, one caveat, I made mine as a reversible vest compared to just a vest with lining. Now, I show you in its entirety how to do it as a reversible vest, so I hope you find that helpful. But if you do not wanna do it reversible, you can definitely do it as you know a lining and not do the reversible portion, which I basically tell you in the sew along, this is for the portion if you wanna do reversible. If you wanna do a lining, hold tight, all right? So it's in the sew along that way. Now, another caveat I will say is if you are doing a reversible and you know what pair of pants or shorts that you're wearing or any type of bottom, including a skirt, I highly advise if you're gonna do like a reversible, make it look really good. Like a solid on one, collar, one side, print on the other side, whatever you wanna do. You can even do two prints, you could even do two solids. It's completely up to you. I will be making this pattern again, that's why I trace, because I do like this vest. And it's really quickly to sew. It took three hours total from um, cutting the fabric, cutting the uh, interfacing, and the whole sew along took three hours to do, which is fairly quick for me, all right? Let's talk about, are the instructions easy to follow? Absolutely, yes, they are easy to follow, but to be honest with you, I followed the instructions probably about 10% of the time. The rest of the time was I was basically going for it. <laughs> so everything was, you know, as is. And like I told you in the instructions, I will move to another section and come back because it's just the way that I construct garments, all right? Let's talk about likes and dislikes. So I don't have any dislikes for this pattern whatsoever. Now, one thing I will say is I absolutely love the shorts. Now that I made the shorts, I will be making the pants several times in different colors because I wouldn't say it's a necessarily quick sew, but I will say it is an easy sew. Once you get the pleats, once you get the um, darts done and all that good stuff, it's an easy sew. All right, so yes, I will be making this again. And one thing that I did was to the facing pieces, um, I did add my own bias binding that I created. You guys know how I feel about the you know, bias tape. If you go to my this or that video, it will tell you how I hate making bias tape. I will not buy bias tape. So I wanted to use some of the black that I had left over from the vest, so that's why I made my own bias tape. And it was a good little detail inside the inside of your shorts or pants, all right? Let's talk about first time experiences. Do I have any first time experiences? No. Well, yes and no. I have never made a vest, all right? But I'm not new to wearing a vest, if that makes sense, okay? So yes, it's the first time making a vest, sewing a vest together, but it's not the first time that I have worn a vest. Um, it's not a first time that I have made something reversible either because if you remember from the jacket, yes, you guys are still asking me for the sew along for Butterick 6328, which I showed in my Paris collection, but I made that jacket during the hashtag sewing five and below last year. Um, and with that one, I will be providing you guys with a sew along probably sometimes in the spring or summer of next year. My plate is full for the remainder of this year, so it will not be this year, but I highly advise you to go ahead and get the pattern. Go to the video that shows how to draft, you know, the different blocks that I made. Go to that video, or you can pause until I do the video because this time I'm going to redo that drafting video and add a zipper. So that's coming pretty soon within the next few months, basically, all right? Let's talk about what I saw it again. Absolutely, heck, heck yeah, okay, yes. I am sewing this entire set again because I actually want a vest that 
will fit. Okay. Um, so for me, for this, I will be keeping the shorts. I will be giving the vest away simply because it doesn't fit. So why keep something that doesn't fit? Right. All right. So uh, let's talk about recommendation. What I re recommend this pattern to others. Yes, because that's why I did the sew along because I'm recommending it to you simply because I think it is uh, amazing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about my pattern rating. So my pattern rating for this pattern is a simple five out of five. I feel that if you have this pattern or even if you don't have it, go get it because once you see the sew along for it, the pants, you will make them several times. Thank me later. In regards to the vest, um, I highly advise you to do a muslin, which you guys know I'm not a girl who does a lot of muslin. But one thing I will say is before I, so when I tried the vest on the lining, the black part, right? When I tried it on, it fit. Once I did it as a reversible, all of a sudden it doesn't fit. And I don't know what's the difference between two days ago and now. I don't know if I can't remember if I tried it on with no bra. I don't know, but it didn't, it fit a couple of days ago, but it doesn't fit now, but it is what it is. I'm not mad about it because I could so want another one. All right. Well, that's it for this pattern review. I hope you enjoyed. And now that we have done the pattern review, go ahead and go to the concession stand so you can refill your drink and get you some stack. Take 10 seconds and we're going to go ahead and get over to the sew along. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next sew along. So you guys, this is a request line sew along for the summer, but this is also one of the patterns that I put down for pants towards the winter time this year. It's, you know, I said pants, but we're gonna be making some shorts simply because I didn't have enough fabric. So because it's still summertime here in Orlando, I'm gonna make the short version. There's nothing different between the shorts and the pants except for a length variation. So you could do the shorts, you could do the pants, the sewing is the same. So pick which one you wanna do, all right? Now, let's go ahead and get into the tools and supplies you need in order to construct. But I'm now, I'm going to be doing view A and view C, this right here. Um, basically the vest and the shorts, you could do whichever view you want, but this tutorial is for both. So we're gonna start off with the vest first, which is view A. There will be chapters put in for this sew along, so you can skip to the shorts or the pants, which I'm doing shorts, but there's just a length variation. I just mentioned that, but you can skip to that portion as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the tools and supplies you need in order to construct both the vest and the shorts. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the tools and supplies you need in order to construct Butterick 6901, which is a two piece set of vests and I'm doing the shorts, um, but the first thing you will need is of course the pattern and the pattern instructions. You will need pens or wonder clips. I have the clips as well. Um, if you want to use the clips, you can, I might use them, but I prefer the pens, but I have both. Um, scissors, you need one for paper, one for uh, fabric, never, meet, miss, never mix the two there. I also use rotary cutters, one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two there. I have pencil and pen. Um, now I did trace my pattern out because I want to preserve the pattern itself because I'm on a weight loss journey. So if I lose weight, I want to be able to cut it again and not have to go buy another pattern and it may not be in stores. So that's why I'm starting to trace a lot of my patterns. If I know I may make it again. All right. Um, you will also need a ruler. The ruler is to mark my darts. Um, so I have a ruler. I have my marking tools as well, which is a disappearing ink marker. I also have my white pen and my chalk roller as well. Um, and then you also will need tape measure to take your measurement. Now for this, for the vest, you need to take your bust measurement and your waist measurement. And then for your short or your pants, take your waist measurement and your hip measurement and then measure your crotch. Now I will talk about this during the shorts portion because you guys always ask me about these pants 
on how you take those measurements, all right? So we'll get into that when it comes time for the shorts, all right? And the last thing that you will need is a calculator. The calculator is to take out the seam allowance and figure out, you know, where you need to mark and how, what size you need to cut, which we'll talk about that because you guys are still having problems with determining. So we'll go ahead and take this one a little slower than some of my other tutorials, all right? Now, that's all the tools and supplies that you need in order to sew the vest and this shorts. So let's go ahead and get into the pattern instructions. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the pattern instructions for Butterick 6901. We are doing the vest and the shorts. So view A and view C. View A will be a reversible um, vest. If you, have not, if you are not looking in my community tab, Sometimes I'll be sharing some gems with you guys on what I'm gonna do next. So you might wanna start going to the community tab and see the little snippets that I put in there for you guys, all right? So we're gonna start off with the vest, um, but the pattern pieces that you will need is pattern piece number one through four. So four pattern pieces, your front, your welt. Now the welt is optional. I will be doing welt to show you guys um, how to do it as well as the back, you'll need the back, which is pattern piece number three and pattern piece number four, which are the tight ends. Also, because I am using 45 inch fabric, I will be following this guide right here, meaning that all of my pattern pieces should be facing up. There's nothing that needs to be on the wrong side down. I'm sorry, wrong side up, right side down. So I follow this cutting layout right here for my fabric, okay? Also on the lining, now it tells you to just cut pattern piece number one and pattern piece number three of lining. Now I completely cut pattern piece one through four out of main fabric and out of lining. Reason being is because it's reversible. If you are gonna do yours reversible and you want the welt, I'm gonna tell you, cut all four pieces again a second time, all right? Um, another situation is if you are just doing the main fabric and the lining, just cut pattern piece number th one and three. Now I'm gonna say it again so you guys are not confused. If you are doing what I'm doing and making it a complete reversible jacket to where it doesn't matter which side you wear it on, you're going to need to cut the same pieces. Pattern piece number one through four. If you do not want the welt pocket, it's optional. If you do not want the welt, welt, which is a fake welt pocket, there is no pockets, okay? So you just need to cut pattern piece one, three, and four. If you are just making the vest and just using a lining, excuse me, cut your lining pieces out of just pattern piece number one and three, all right? Moving over to the interface portion. Now, I interface pattern piece number one and two for both my main fabric and my lining fabric. Why? Because it's reversible. So I'm doing the same thing, no matter if it's the black fabric, which I'll show you here shortly, which is technically my lining fabric, but I could also use it as my main fabric. All right, now for this, this tutorial and this sew along, I will be showing you on the black fabric. However, the Ankara fabric is my main fabric and my black fabric is my lining fabric, but I'm treating the black fabric as if it is the main fabric so you could see better because sometimes making darts and stuff like that, you cannot see on this dark colored uh, Ankara fabric, all right? So you'll see the Ankara fabric when we start constructing it and putting it together, all right? Now, that is, in terms of the vest. Now, in terms of the shorts, you will need pattern piece number five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, all right? So you need the front, the back, the pockets, carrier, front facing and back facing. Also, depending on what size you are cutting, you need to follow the cutting layout for whatever size that you are cutting, all right? for your, now I did not make pants, I'm making shorts, so this is my cutout right here, all right? Now let's go ahead and get over into the instructions, all right? So I really, I am not going to be walking you through the instructions because it is a sew along, but I will make some notes here quickly. Now, I will be doing the front and the back as stated in the 
uh, pattern instruction. When it comes to the lining, it's going to be a little different. It's gonna be sewn the same way for the lining as I did for my main fabric. However, I'm going to skip all the way to the button simply because I do not wanna sew any hand buttons. So I'm going to sew my buttons on before I attach my lining to my main fabric. You will see that in the sew along, but I am telling you that it will go out of order when we get to that portion before attaching the lining to my main fabric, all right? So I hope I explained that and you guys understand that because I will be walking you guys through this as slowly as possible so you can understand. I will take little clips at the sewing machine as well only on the portion that I feel that needs a sewing machine intro, all right? <laughs> So that's it for the pattern instruction and pattern pieces. Now I'm gonna actually show you the pattern pieces that you will need for the vest, which is pattern piece one and four. So let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces need. You only need four pattern pieces in order to construct this vest. So the first pattern piece is pattern piece number one. Now this pattern piece, now, like I mentioned, I have went ahead and basically traced the pattern pieces. So that's why it looks a little different, but this is pattern piece number one, which is the front for VA, which is the vest. You need to cut two of fabric, two of interfacing and two of lining. Now I'm gonna show you what I did. I cut two of main fabric, which this is my main fabric. I interfaced this piece, the black fabric is my lining fabric, make sure you mark your buttonholes, okay, on both. So this is the right side wearing it. So if you're looking at it on the table, it's gonna be on your left side. Mark your, um, where you're gonna make your buttonholes, okay? Mark that on that piece, all right? I also interface the so-called lining because like I said, it's gonna be reversible. Make sure you transfer your dart and clip all your notches and mark all your dots, okay? So this is pattern piece number one, all right? Next pattern is pattern piece number two, which are your fake welt, okay? So this is your welt. This is uh, cut to a fabric and cut to of interfacing. Now, because I did not just cut to a fabric, it's reversible, so I cut to a main fabric, to of lining fabric, and interface, all four pieces, okay? So if you're doing the same thing, that's what you need to do if you're doing reversible. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number three, which is your back. You need to cut two of fabric and two of lining. So basically two of your main fabric, which is the Ankara, and then two of a lining fabric, which is the black fabric. And the last pattern piece is pattern piece number four, which is your tie ends that goes in the back. I cut two of my main fabric and two of my lining fabric, all right? So that's all the pieces that you need to cut in order to sew Butterick 6901, which is the vest. Um, and then we'll do the shorts here shortly. So let's go ahead and get into the sewing for this reversible vest. All right, so I have the instructions simply because a lot of you are not understanding the instructions. So I'm going to try to refer back to the instructions as much as possible during the sew along because this is more of an average to sew sew along, all right? So we have done number one, which is apply your interfacing, trim the corners. If you do that, I don't, I just uh, fuse my interfacing. So we are currently at step number two, which is where we're gonna stitch the darts for the front pattern piece. Then we're gonna slash through the dart um, at the back and then press them open, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. Now, like I said that I am doing reversible, so I'm going to do that for both my front pattern piece and my lining. Now, if you are not doing it reversible and you're just gonna do a um, do the main fabric and lining, I advise you to sew the same thing for your main fabric and your lining, so when you get to the lining part, it's already done, all right? So you guys know how I do when there's something that has to be lined you guys know how I do it. I typically do it at the same time as me sewing the main fabric to where it's already done because I'm not gonna show you again for the lining the same thing that I did for the main, all right? So now what we're gonna do, I have done this so many times on my channel, we're going to pin out the darts, okay? So basically, basically 
How do you pin out the darts? You just put it together like you have done before and you're going to pin at that dot. Make sure that it match on both sides and just pinch out your dart. So go ahead and pinch out your darts now, making sure that it lines up on both sides. You're gonna do this for both your lining fabric as well as your main fabric. So go ahead and pin out your darts now. All right, so now that I have my dart pinned out using five eighths of it, well, I'm gonna say five eighths of an inch seam allowance, but it's not necessarily five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're just gonna follow the line. So you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way to this dot. And then you're not gonna back stitch. You're just gonna pull up some thread and tie your darts. So go ahead and do your darts for both the front, main fabric and lining. And then also go ahead and do your dart in the back of your uh, vest, which is pattern piece number three. So go ahead and pinch out all your darts and do your darts now. All right, so I went ahead and did the darts for the front and the back. All right, so I'm gonna show you the back as well. So these are the front right here and then the back right here, okay? Now, one thing I wanna show you, I'm gonna pretty much just work on the black. You guys gonna see mainly the black because some things are harder to see in the Ankar fabric. Now, I did this to one, but what you're going to do to the front pattern pieces for your lining and your main fabric is you're just gonna cut as far up as possible without going through the dot. And then you're going to press your seams flat. Now I highly advise you to use your seam roll and then press it open. Now, if you don't know what the heck a seam roll is, this is your seam roll. What you wanna do is put it down just like that and just like this. Put your front on, open it out, and press. Do not make any puckers. You're gonna press as far as possible without having puckers right there at that dot, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you how you open this. Now, I'm gonna move my back pattern pieces out of the way. So I'm gonna take my scissors. This is my front to the black, like you see here. I'm going to take my scissors and I am using the Fiskars. These are amazing. So if you're looking for some scissors, Fiskars or LH is the best ones. Or again, uh, I'll put good scissors in the description box below. But what you're gonna do is clip. Now, I'm not gonna clip through my dot. That's good enough for me. Now I'm gonna go to my ironing board in my ironing station and press this open. You're gonna do this for your lining as well as your front pattern pieces, okay? All four lining, if you're doing the lining, just the lining, but all four front pattern pieces, you're gonna do that too, all right? Now, when it comes to the back pattern piece, let me show you the back. When it comes to the back pattern piece, you're going to be pressing your dart, which is here, you do not wanna press it towards the side seam. You wanna press it towards the center. So your dart's gonna be folded down like this. Let me show you, turning it around. You're gonna press this one towards the center, all right? So go ahead and press your darts um, towards the center on the back and then press your darts open on the front. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and made the darts. I pressed them open on both my front pieces and my back pieces. I also have the main fabric, which is the Ankara done as well. So the next step is for me to go ahead and do the welt. Now I have done it. I have already done both of my front uh, pattern pieces. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. You probably can't see it really good. That's why I wanted to show you on the black. So I did it for the Ankara fabric. Now I'm gonna show you one of the pattern pieces for the black where I have done the front well, which is right here. This is what it's gonna look like, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to do it on the other black, which, you know, for you, it may be your lining. Now, first things first is grab a marking tool. 
If you have not already marked, now I can see where my uh, dots are. So I'm just gonna mark my dots. Make sure if you don't have your pattern piece, bring your pattern piece back so you're able to mark your dots in your front. So I have two dots right here and two dots right here. All right, now I'm gonna move my front off to the side right quick, grab pattern piece number two, and you have a total of six dots, three on each side. What you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to pin on both sides. So grab your pins, and I'm gonna pin right here, and then I'm gonna pin the other side as well. All right, so now that I have both sides pinned, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and at the end, and sew both sides. Once you do that, trim your side seams down and turn it right side out. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I sewn my welt right sides together, sewed so the side seam, turned it right side out, use my point turner to pick out the corners without making a hole. If you notice, I have a stitching line right here. It's just dot to dot. So if you need a stitching line because you don't know where to sew at, you can go ahead and grab your ruler. That's why I said it's part of the tools and supplies you will need and go from dot to dot and make your line across. All right, that's all I did. <laughs> Nothing special, but I just wanted to let you know that. Now grab your front pattern piece. And what you're going to do is the two dots at the bottom, that's where you're going to line up those two dots because that's where you are going to be stitching at. And then you're gonna pin on each side. So pin your left and your right side at the dots. All right, so now that I have the welt pinned in place, all I'm going to do is back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and I'm just gonna sew on that line, all right? So go ahead and sew on that line. Once you do that, you're going to trim down to about a fourth of an inch, but do not cut too much off, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. After, after you trim down, you're just going to press it up, and then I'm just gonna edge stitch the bottom, all right? So let's do the first part first because I want to go slow and show you exactly what we're gonna do because most people get kind of, you know, tripped up with welt pockets. So even though these are the fake ones and not the real ones, let's go ahead and do it slow. So go ahead and stitch on this line. Um, and once you finish stitching, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, go ahead and trim this down. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have it stitched across on the line, like you see, I'm gonna bring it up so you can see. All right, so grab your scissors and being careful not to cut your vest. I'm just gonna hold it up just a little bit and I'm just gonna trim it down to about a fourth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so now that I have that trim down like this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this, go upward, I'm gonna give mine a press, and then I'm going to edge stitch the bottom. Now I'm going to edge stitch the bottom for me, three eighths of an inch. For you, you may want to edge stitch a fourth of an inch. But one thing you wanna make sure is that you catch in that bottom edge. So if you need three eighths of an inch, do three eighths. If you need a fourth of an inch, do a fourth of an inch. Just make sure that this bottom raw edge is hidden to where when you, um, when you look at it, it's enclosed, okay? You're not seeing raw edge. So do that, press it, edge stitch this bottom, and then edge stitch the sides. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my welt um, edge stitched and stitched the side, so it's looking really nice. If you notice right here, you don't have that raw edge peeking up. That's why I stitched at three eighths at the bottom instead of one fourth. Um, make sure you clip all of your threads as you go along. Otherwise, you'll be playing the clip the threads at the end. If you have not watched my this or that video, you already know I do it as I go. All right, so now that we have this um, done, the front is done, move this off to the side and grab your back pieces, which, is, which are pattern piece number three. And then what you're gonna do is with right sides together, we're gonna sew up the center back seam. Now, I went ahead and pinned it together 
And what we're gonna do is starting at this dot, using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, we're gonna backstitch at this dot. So don't start all the way down here. We're gonna start at this dot, backstitch at the dot, and sew all the way up and backstitch at the end, all right? Then press your seams open. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the center back of the back of the vest sewn, I have it pressed open. This is what it looks like on the wrong side. This is what it looks like on the right side of the vest, looking really good. Go ahead and move your back out of the way. Grab pattern piece number four, which are your ties, all right? Your tie ends. Now, this is the right side. You have dots at the end right here. So with right sides together, you're gonna fold it in half, hot dog style, all right? And then what we're gonna do is pin on this side and pin across the top. So go ahead and pin, like you see right here, pin across the top now. All right, so now that I have it pinned using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, what we're gonna do is sew across right here and sew all the way across the top. The side that have the dot, you want to leave free and open. So do not sew this portion down, okay? This side right here. You're just gonna stitch this portion, 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, pivot, sew across. That's it, all right? So go ahead and do both of your ties now. And also do it on the lining because whatever you're doing here, you're doing on the lining as well. So go ahead and do your main fabric and your lining. All right, so I am done sewing right sides together. This is the wrong side. This is the right side, what it would look like. So I'm gonna show you how to turn it right side out because you guys ask me this all the time. So this is the wrong side and I need to turn it right side out. So this is the tie in wrong side. So all I'm gonna do is take this, kind of push this in inside to form like a little peak. Then I'm gonna take my little, I guess you call it like ice cream stick, dowel or whatever you wanna call it. It's actually used for if you bake cakes, right? So it's called a dowel. But I'm just gonna take that in there. I'm just gonna put, put that in there and then just push the fabric through, being careful not to poke any holes. So be kind of, you know, diligent and careful while going through, all right? So after I do that, I'm just gonna make sure that I push out the corners, but not too hard. Be very, very soft and just pull it out on the end, all right? Drop that, don't need that anymore. And then I'm gonna go to my earning station and then press this. So go ahead and press your tie ends now. All right, so now that I have my tie ends pressed, go ahead and grab your back pattern piece, okay? And we're gonna attach our ties to the back at the side seams. Now, I'm going to mark where my dots are, but if you did not mark where, you probably can't see this, so I'm gonna make it a little dark on my fabric so you can see the placement lines. That's basically what it's called on your pattern. All right, so those are my placement lines, so you're able to see the placement lines, okay? Now, what you want to do is grab one of your ties. You have that in that's open. Now, here's the thing. You wanna put the right side, so wrong side on top of the right side, okay? Now. The thing about it is it's not gonna be turned back this way. You want the nice side facing up, okay? And then you're just gonna match up the dots. So I'm just gonna pin on the sides, on both sides, okay? So I'm gonna put another pin right here. Then I'm gonna move this out of my way and pin this one on the other side. Now you see how when I press it, I have this bottom right here. I don't want that to be showing facing up. So I'm going to make sure it's down to where that's not showing on the right side of my garment, okay? So I'm going to make sure I line up my dots on this edge, this side right here as well. So then I'm gonna pin. 
And then all I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine and baste it. Now, before I baste it, let me bring the instructions to tell you. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make sure I press this down a little bit more, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to baste both sides and then I'm going to create a square. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my um, pattern piece. Okay. And I'm going to fold it in half to show you this. So fold your pattern piece in half. And what I'm going to do is take my ends. You see where it says stitching line. So you're going to stitch like a big old rectangle right there. So I have my dot here, so I'm going to match that up. And all I'm going to do is take my white chalk pencil, right? And I'm just going to make a line right at the top. Okay. I'm also going to flip it over and I know where my line is. And I'm going to make that same line at the bottom. And then just connect that white line all the way down. So I'm going to edge stitch across, across the top and bottom, and then connect that white line right here. So we're just basically making a box going across, down, and back across. And I'm going to be using a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to do that to the other side as well. So once again, I'm going to take my pattern piece that I folded in half, right? To find the dots and I'm going to match the top dot with the dot on my pattern piece. And I know my stitching line is right here. So I'm just going to mark that stitching line right there, flip it over, match up the bottom with that dot and make my stitching line at the bottom. Then I'm going to just basically make a line straight down meeting those two dots. All right. Now, like I said, I'm going to go to the sewing machine, edge stitching at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. I'm just going to first base the side. I'm just going to base it at three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to edge stitch that box. All right. So go ahead and do that for both your lining and your main fabric and we'll come back and continue and then make your box. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my tie in, tie in sewn on the back of my vest, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and attach the front to the back at the shoulder seam. So basically with right sides together, you want to pin at your shoulder seams. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure I'm matching up the notch, there's a notch right here. So make sure that you are matching up that notch and pin all the way across both shoulder seams. So go ahead and pin your shoulder seams in place now. All right, so now that I have my shoulder seams pinned using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and at the end and sew across both shoulder seams. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my vest attached at the shoulder seams, right sides together, I stitched across and pressed the seam allowance open. This is what it's looking like. Please note that my side seams are not sewn. We'll sew that here shortly. But now before we move further, let's go ahead and sew on our buttons by machine. Reason being is because if you are doing this as a reversible, you need to sew on your buttons now before you attach your lining to your main fabric. Now, if you are just doing the lining version without having it become reversible because you want buttons on both sides, then you're not going to do this. You're going to follow the next step after sewing on the buttons. All right. So just hang tight on this clip. And when I come back, we'll continue with putting the lining and the main fabric together. All right. Now, if you are doing the reversible one, like you see me doing here, go ahead and grab your pattern piece and we're going to mark our buttons. Now you can, I wouldn't advise you to, you can mark, you know, figure out where you're going to put your buttons at. But this is how I like to do mine. So I'm just going to move everything out the way except for the left side where my buttons are going to go. And I'm going to take my pattern piece. 
I'm going to mirror it and put it like this. And then I'm just gonna mark the center of that buttonhole line. So I'm just gonna mark all the way down just the center of my buttonhole where my buttonholes will go, all right? So I have four right here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take four pins and I'm just going to basically put it through because when I put, when I go to my sewing machine and sew on the buttons, I know exactly where it's gonna go and I could pull my pin out while I'm at the um, machine, all right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go to the machine and I'm just gonna show you four buttons that I am using for this simply because this is what I have in my stash, all right? So I'll show you here in a second what I did for my main fabric, which I, I can show you now because it's already done. So for my main fabric, what I, I have already put the buttons on, this is what it looks like. So I did like a contrast button. So I put black and then kind of like a grayish button here, if you can see that on the camera. And that's what it's looking like on the main fabric, just a little bit of contrast. And then on the black portion or the lining, whatever, right? I'm gonna put these buttons, which is, you know, I put two on the other side because, you know, look, I'm just using what's in my stash. So I'm gonna put these uh, four on this right here, all right? So go to your machine and do that, and then we'll come back and continue. Go ahead and sew on your buttons if you are doing the reversible version now. All right, so now that I have the buttons placed very nicely on the vest, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this lining to the main fabric, okay? So I'm gonna bring this one and I'm gonna actually put the Ankara one down on the table and attach it that way, all right? So I'm just going to fix it right quick. And you probably really can't see my button holes on the Ankara one, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach right sides together and let's go ahead and attach the lining to the main fabric right sides together. So I'm just gonna turn this like this, like so. And I'm going to take my black fabric or my, um, I guess you could call it the lining fabric, and I'm going to pen. Now, we are going to sew, let me, let me fix this so you could get a good glance of it right quick. So you should have the, the sections with your buttons on one side and then your, um, your buttons should be on one side, your buttonholes should be on the other side. So if they are not matching up, guess what? You need to make sure that your buttonholes are on, I mean, your buttonholes are on one side, your, the part with your buttons on the other side. If you do not have that, switch it now. Once you do that, we're going to go ahead and pin. So I'm gonna give you time to make sure that your buttonholes are on the right side now. So go ahead and do that, check it, and then we're gonna go ahead and attach. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that you have looked and made sure that you have it on the right side. Now, I want to say one thing that I forgot to mention, putting on buttons. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I forgot and had to do a switch rule real quick. Determine which one will be your main fabric, okay? And I'm gonna put this before you put on your buttons. Um, so really this would be my main fabric. This would be, the black would be my lining fabric, but I'm making it reversible, but this is still my main fabric. So the buttons go on the right side looking at it, but left side wearing it, okay? Which means that on your lining, it's going to be in reverse. What that means is, okay, what that means is your lining fabric, which is the black fabric is what I changed up when it came to the buttons. Looking at it, it's going to be on your left side, but wearing it is going to be on your right side, if that makes sense, okay? So therefore, the buttons are going to be on opposite side when you're putting it on. So your main fabric, looking at it, right side. Your lining fabric, looking at it, left side, okay? I hope that makes sense. So what happens is when you turn your garment right side up, so I'm looking at the right side, 
you're going to attach your buttons on one side and you're, you're going to make your button holes on the other side, okay? So you see how your button holes are on this side? So when you attach your lining, it's gonna be on that side as well, all right? I hope that makes sense. But if you have any questions, definitely hit me up and let me know and I will be sure to answer. So now what we're gonna do is with right sides together, we're going to sew the bottom, the neck edge, and the armholes, okay? So make sure that you have your tie ends out of the way and just pin, we're gonna pin. But first, let me move my tie ends out of the way. All right, so now that I have that out the way, so let me recap, all right? So on this side right here, I'm gonna turn it around so you could pretty much see it while pinning. All right, so I'm looking at the front, okay? So this is the front. On this side, I have both buttons on this side. And then I have the button holes on this side. Now I will be making the button holes. I mean, you can literally make the button holes right now, or you can wait until you attach it and then make your button holes. It's up to you. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make the button holes now before attaching it. But I'm gonna show you how you attach it, all right? So what you're going to do is basically line up your main fabric and your lining and you're going to pin it together. But what you're going to be pinning together is the front, so all of the front, around your neck edge, so the front, neck edge, and then you're going to uh, pin your armhole, all right? Now before I do that, I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and sew on my buttonholes. I'm gonna make my buttonholes. I'm gonna do that, slit into my buttonholes, and then I'll attach. So let me go ahead and make my buttonholes. If you are doing the reversible style as well and you want it to look clean on both the right side and the wrong side, go ahead and make your buttonholes now. If you are not doing the reversible and you just want to do the lining, stay put because what you're gonna do is go ahead and line it and then make your buttonholes once, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, doing the reversible, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my buttonholes and then come back and show you how to attach the lining to the main fabric and we'll continue there. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the buttonholes done, I'm gonna show you what the, that looks like. So the buttonholes done here, the buttonholes are done there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pin the front and the neck. So I'm going to pin the front from the bottom right here all the way through and all the way around the front, all right? So go ahead and pin your front pattern pieces now. All right, so now that I have it pinned in the front, before I do this side, I want you to ma make sure that your seam allowance at your shoulders are matched up. And then you're going to pin there. And now what I'm going to do is turn it and then pin at my neck edge, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that my center backs are matched up on my lining as well as on my main fabric and I'm going to pin. And then I'm gonna pin across my neck area, making sure that it is flat. So go ahead and pin around your neck area now. And now that I'm pinned around my neck area, the only thing you need to do is pin along the front on the other side. So go ahead and pin along the front on the other side now. Being careful not to catch your buttons. All right, so now that I have it pinned, I'm going to start at the um, bottom hemline and using five eight seven inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning, so all the way along the front, V area, and then I'm gonna sew around the neck area and back down to the other side, hem, and back stitch at the end, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Once I'm done doing that, I'm going to go ahead and stitch the bottom. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and pin the bottom to where, you know, basically cut 
down how many times you go to the uh, back and forth to the sewing machine. Now, one thing I'm going to do is pin my ties out of the way. Um, so just be careful when you're pinning out the way you want them to be out of your way. You do not want to sew accidentally sew your ties onto the bottom portion or even to the side portion of your garment. So I'm just going to pin my ties out of the way, just like so. And it just helps out with not having things in your way. And then I'm going to make sure that I match up my bottom. So let me go ahead and pin the other ones out of the way. And then we will go ahead and pin the bottom area as well. So go ahead and pin your ties out of the way now. All right, so now that I have my ties pinned out the way, I'm gonna go ahead and start pinning the bottom. And all you're going to do, leave the sides alone. And I'm go just going to turn it so you could see it really good in the camera. And now we're looking at the bottom portion. Just make sure you do not pin yourself. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure that everything at the bottom is matched up really good and pin across both sides. So I'm just gonna pin where my darts meet up. I'm gonna pin at that side and pin across the bottom. So go ahead and pin across the bottom now. All right, so now that I have my um, bottom pin, now what I'm gonna do, let me say this as slowly as possible because I'm gonna start with my bottom. I'm gonna start at one side right here, back stitch at the beginning, so all the way across to this end right here. Back stitch at the end, break my threads. Then I'm gonna start over here, back stitch at the beginning, make sure that everything there, that there's nothing pressed over here, all right? Except for the center back, but you wanna make sure nothing is pressed and everything is out. So across using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance here as well, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, all right? So that's the bottom. Then we're going to do the front, starting at the hem, 5 eighths of an inch, Start at the beginning, back stitch at the beginning, so all the way around and back stitch at the end. All right? So go ahead and do that. After you do that, the last thing you're going to sew before we come back again and turn it out, you're going to do your armholes as well. So make sure I just like to do many steps at once to keep from going back and forth to the sewing machine. But make sure after you sew this and you trim it down, make sure you pin along your shoulder seams in your arm area. So I'm just gonna pin this in place just to kind of show you a little bit. All right, and then you're going to pin around your armhole area as well, and then sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance there as well, and trim it down on both sides, all right? So go ahead and do that, and then when we'll come back, I'll show you what it looks like, and then turn it right side out. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we went ahead and attached right sides together, the main fabric to the lining fabric, if you notice, I went ahead and sewn the front. So I'm gonna show you, I sewn the front around the neck edge back to the front. I also did the bottom right sides together. I sewn the bottom. So the only thing you have left to do is the side seams. Now I'm gonna bring the instructions back so you could see this. So right, it's basically right here on step number 21. I'm gonna read it to you, but you know, you can read yourself, but it's 32 inches above the armhole seams and ending two inches below the seam at low edge. You're going to stitch back to front at side and lining edges together in one continuous seam as so. Now, what I'm gonna show you is basically what they mean by that, but we're not gonna be doing no slip stitching. We're not gonna be doing no hand stitching. If you know, you know that I do not do any type of hand stitching, okay? So what we're gonna do is with right sides together. So what I'm gonna do is kind of like poke it out a little bit so you could kind of see this and you could see, you know, it says two inches above and below, right? But what you need to do is basically you're going to bring this out like this and you're going to sew your side seams 
it's going to be like this and you're going to sew your side seam. Now you can also do it like this, where this is your side seam and you could just fold it in like this on both sides, about five eighths of an inch and you could slip stitch. Now me, I hate hand sewing to be honest with you, but I feel like I'm going to get the best finish doing it this way. Um, instead of, you know, trying to do two inches below and above, uh, above and below the side seam. So that's what I'm gonna do on mine. So all I'm gonna do is create a basting stitch all the way down, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, press it on both sides. So I'm just gonna press it on this side in and press it on this side in and then put them together. And I'm going to literally stitch um, hand sew. Now it's not much, that's why I'm gonna hand sew because I want that clean finish and you're not gonna be able to see my stitches, okay? So that's all that's left for you to do. I hope you enjoyed this sew along. Um, we're gonna get ready to start doing the pants here shortly, but if you make this vest, do not forget to tag me at rochelle.handmade.design on Instagram. But one thing I wanna show you, the features are, if you notice that the buttons are, it looks like one complete buttons all the way through, even though I did the buttons separately. Um, so you could uh, put the buttons through with no issues there on um, this side. And then you could reverse it just like this and have the black side showing and then also button it up that way as well. Either way, the choice is yours. I hope you enjoyed this reversible vest. So let's go ahead and put the vest aside and let's start working on the shorts. All right, so I hope your vest came out really good. This is the next day, by the way, so I hope you didn't think I sewn both things the same day. Okay, so this is the next day, and we are now going to be working on the shorts for Butterick 6901. So let's go ahead and start off by definitely talking about the pattern pieces you will need, which will be pattern piece number five through 10. So just running it off, what you will need, you will need pattern piece number eight, which is optional, it's your carriers. Now I'm putting carriers on mine just in case I decide to wear a belt, but um, you're not gonna really be able to see it, so I will decide if I want to do this step or not as I'm constructing. I might do this step just to show you guys, but then I might take it off. I don't know, but I went ahead and cut it but you need to cut one of fabric. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number nine, which is your front facing. You need to cut on, one on the fold of fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. Now what I did, let me take that one off. What I did was to preserve my pattern, all I did was fold it back and pressed it to where I know what size I'm cutting. Now, if you wanna know what size I cut, I cut a size 22 simply because 20 is, will be a little tight on my waist. And I'm gonna show you the ways to finish waist measurement here shortly after I tell you the pattern pieces, but I am cutting a size 22 and if I need to take it down a little bit, I will do so in the, um, when I'm doing fitting, all right? But this is pattern piece number nine, front facing. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 10, your back facing. You also need to cut one on fold of fabric and one on fold of interfacing. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number six, your pockets, you need to cut two of fabric. Pattern piece number five, your front, you need to cut two of fabric, but make sure that this pattern piece is facing down on your um, fabric. The wrong side of the pattern piece is facing up. Make sure you transfer the pleat line as well as the um, notches and dots, all right? And the last pattern piece is pattern piece number seven, which is your back. You need to cut to a fabric. You need to mark your dots, clip into your notches, and also uh, make sure you mark the lines for your uh, darts, all right? That's all the pattern pieces you need. Now, let's go ahead first and talk about what sides you need to cut. Now, I know pants, shorts, bottom portion of individuals' bodies just happen to be 
that thing that you guys are like, Rochelle, I do not know what size to cut. Can you please help me out? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna help you out a little bit and just show you the front pattern piece. We're gonna work on the front pattern piece, which are your pleats. And I'm gonna show you how I determine what sides that I needed to cut, all right? So I'm gonna just move my fabric out of the way right quick before we get started. Now I have done this on many patterns and I'm not gonna continuously show this because this is something that, you know, is going to be one of those things that you have to learn if you are doing pants, shorts, skirts, what have you, that fits the bottom portion of your body, including jumpsuits, all right? So I made a measurement guide for you, so I'm gonna zoom it in, so don't worry about it, all right? Um, and the waist measurement, so please take note of the sizes I'm going to tell you, all right? So if you are doing a size 16 for your pants, your final measurement will be a 39 and, a, and 3 fourths, or 39.75. If you are doing a size 18, your final measurement is a 42 inch waist. A size 20 will be a 43.75. Um, 22 is a 46.5. And then a 24 is a 48 inch waist. I'm sorry. These are for the hips, not the waist. I do apologize about that. All right. So I'm going to um, say it again for your hips. And because my hips right now is measuring a 45.5, I am cutting a size 22. I'll talk about the waist measurement here shortly. But if your hips are, once again, size 16 is a 39.75, size 18 is a 42, size 20 is a 43.75, a 22, 46.5, and a 24 is 48. Now, we're gonna start with the hips and then I'll come back to the waist. How do I come up with how to measure the hips? Now, because I know after doing all lines across what size I'm cutting, which is the size 22, right? So once I figured out each line, yes, I went to, from the 16 line all the way over, the 18, same thing, the 20, 22, what have you, right? So if you can see this, and I'm going to try to zoom it in as much as possible, side 16, when I measured across, I came out with 12, okay? You're seeing this. I'm doing sides 16 as an example for you guys. I come out with a size 12, measuring from the 16 line all the way over, okay? Now, because I need to cut two, it's two front pattern piece. I'm going to take that 12, multiply it by two which gets me 24. Now, because the seam, now you have to take out the seam allowance and that's five eighths of an inch on the side seam, five eighths of an inch on the crotch seam. So five eighths plus five eighths is 1.25. Well, that's only 1.25 for the back pattern piece. You have to do the same thing for the front pattern piece as well, right? To accommodate. But because this, this front pattern piece it's two pattern piece. You're gonna take the front pattern piece, five eighths and five eighths on the front, on the left pant, and then the same thing on the right, 1.25. So 1.25 plus 1.25 is 2.5, okay? So once again, you're gonna have 12 inches across for size 16 when you measure with your tape measure. This is where you need your tape measure, by the way. Multiply by two, which gives you 24 and then take out the seam allowance, which is 2.5. That gives you 21.5. Now that is the circumference of your front pattern piece when wearing it, right? You're gonna do the exact thing for your back. So let me grab the back pattern piece. And now we're gonna look at the back pattern piece. Now at the hips, side 16 is the example that I'm giving. You're gonna measure from one side to the other and this gives me 12.25 because it's, you know, right at 12 and a fourth. So one point, I'm sorry, 12.25. So I'm gonna take that 12.25, multiply it by two because it says cut two, all right? Because you have two sides to your back, you have two back pattern pieces, right? So that gives me 24.5. 
five eighths for the side seam, five eighths for the front crotch curve, right? On both patterns. So 1.25 plus 1.25 is 2.5, which is the same allowance for your back pattern piece, which gives you 22. So you're gonna take that 22 from, for the back pattern piece, the circumference, and add 21.5, which gives you the 43.5. I'm sorry, yes, 43.5, okay? Now, that measures out the 43.5 right here. Now, that is the size that you will be given if you do these two, okay? Now, I hope you understood that, all right? So measure your hips for your front, measure your hip for your back. That is what you will get when everything is sewn together on your pants, all right? Now, let's go up to the waist. Now, I'm going to be using a different size for the waist. I'm not using a 16 because it's the same thing, all right? I'm giving another opportunity for someone else with a different size, okay? So let's say that your waist is a 34, all right? Um, now my waist currently is a 33.5. So let's just use, matter of fact, you know what? I wanna go a little bigger than 34 because I would normally cut the 34 anyway um, for 33.5. So let's just say that the waist is a 36 waist, all right? And I want to see which one is as close to 36 as possible, all right? So the first thing I see that it has the finished garment measurement, but one thing that I've been noticing is the finished garment measurement is a little off, meaning that it's a little too small. So that's why I measure at my waist, my hips, my bust to make sure I'm getting an accurate fit, all right? Now, first things first, I'm going to look and see which one is as close to a 36 as possible. Well, it tells me the 20. All right, well, it says a 37 and a half, but the 18 tells me it's 35 and a half. Well, if I do the size 20, it's going to be a little too big. So I'm gonna start with what they say that the 18 is a 35 and a half. So what I'm gonna do is take my tape measure, go from this 18 line all the way to the front, okay? and it gives me 10.25 or 10 and a quarter. All right, that's what 18 is, 10 and a quarter. Well, the front is two pattern piece, so I'm gonna multiply that by two and get 20.5. Now, once again, the seam allowance, five eighths on this side, five eighths at the crotch curve, which gives me 1.25. You have to add 1.25 for one of your front pattern piece and another 1.25 for the other pant leg because you have two pant legs, okay? Um, so after you do that, it's 2.5. So you take the 20.5 minus 2.5 and you have 18. Well, you also have pleats. So now you have to subtract your pleats. Now, you're gonna have a pleat right here on the left and you're gonna have a pleat on the right as well. So you have to take out the seam allowance for your pleat. So what I'm gonna do is because I'm using 18 as the example, I'm gonna go from that 18 dot right here, and then I'm gonna come and see where it fits right here, which is at 18 right here. So the pleats measure two inches. So you have two inches on, I'm, let's make sure, let's do that again. Two inches, I'm sorry, two inches. So you're gonna have uh, the pleats being two inches here and then two inches on the other side, okay? So what you have is a pleat on the left side, a pleat on the right side, which is four inches. That's going to be taken out. So basically, essentially, you're gonna have this, it's going to come over and fold like that, which forms your box pleat, okay? I hope you're following along. So when you take that out, you're gonna take, we're using 18. So when you take 18, your final minus the four, you end up getting 14. Now, I only did two inches right here for 16 because I took it out again, you know, to give a final measurement. So that's what I'm gonna give you. So let me show you with a pencil. So I'm gonna write it on the back of this piece of paper so you get an idea. We are using 
size 18, as your example, we came up with 10.25, and that was just measuring across at the waist. We have two pattern pieces, two front pieces, so we're gonna multiply by two, and that gives us 20.5. The seam allowance for this portion right here and the front curve is 1.25. We have two fronts, which gives us 2.5. 1.25, 1.25, and then 1.25 again, right? It's 2.5, all right? So this gives us an 18. Now we did figure out that the pleats on one side is two inches, and then the pleat on the other side is two inches. So we're gonna take out that two inches, well, actually four, because two and two is four. So now we know that the waist at the front, I'm gonna go put front waist, is 14 inches for size 18, all right? Now we're gonna do the exact same thing for the back pattern piece for size 18. So we're gonna take our tape measure, go across to the size 18, it gives me 11, all right? So you're gonna take that 11, we have two back pattern pieces, so we're gonna multiply by two, which gives us 22. Take out the seam allowance, 1.25, 1.25, which gives us 2.5. Okay, following along. All right, so that gives us 19.5, all right? Now the next step is to figure out your darts. You have darts, so you're gonna have two darts in the back of your pants. So because we're cutting the size 18, you're gonna find where the 18 dart line, I'm circling it just for you, all right? And you're gonna measure from dot to dot. Dot to dot is one inch for the darts, okay? So because you have a dart, you have two darts, one for the left pant back and one for the right pant back. So you're gonna take out two inches for the dart. I'm gonna put darts. Okay, and this one was pleats. So when you add both of the, to subtract that, you get 17.5, all right? So when you add the front, and this is back waist, so when you add the front plus the back waist, you'll get 31.5 inches. When everything is done, you'll have a measurement of 31.5 inches, okay? Now, that's how you do it for your waist measurement. Now, at this point, whatever sides you need to do, figure out, if I were you, I would do every single side and then determine which sides you're going to make, all right? So let's go ahead and get started with the sewing. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and grab pattern piece number five. All right, so let's go ahead and start with making our pleat in the front of our pants, shorts, whatever you wanna call them, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is make your pleat, you're gonna start at this pleat and bring it over to the other one. So you have four dots total, so you have two at the top, two at the bottom. I'm hoping you can see this, I'm gonna bring it up so you can see. I marked mine. So you wanna go from uh, the side where you have your side seam over to the front to your where your crotch seam is, all right? So I'm gonna turn it this way so I could literally work with my fabric and I'm gonna take my pleat and move it over to the other one and then pin. All right, so I have it pinned and what I'm gonna do is starting at the dot at the top, I'm just gonna stitch like an edge stitch as close to the edge as possible. I'm gonna stitch from that dot to the second dot. Then press my pleat down flat. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and did the pleat on the front of my, my front shorts, right? So, and I sewn it down. I pressed it so it's looking really good. That's what it looks like, all right? Um, so while I was at the sewing machine, I'm gonna tell you to go ahead and do this as well if you have not already. And it's basically going ahead and making your dart in the back of your um, pants as well. Pants or shorts, whichever one you're doing, all right? So all you're gonna do, we have done darts so many times on this channel. So go ahead and make your dart in the back. 
And then you're going to press the seam allowance for your dart, which is for the back pattern piece, towards the curve, you know, your, um, your center front curve. I'm sorry, center back curve, all right? So that's what I went ahead and did. It just cuts down on how many times you go back and forth to the sewing machine. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is grab pattern piece number six, and we're gonna start constructing our pocket. Now, what we're gonna do is with right sides together, I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see it. We're going to line up our notches. We have a notch right here. We're gonna line up our notches and line up our dots and then pin at this edge right here. This curve that you have is what we're pinning in place. So go ahead and pin that in place now. All right, so now that I have that pinned in place, now I'm gonna turn mine over to show you how I'm going to do this, all right? Now I'm gonna start at the top using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to stitch from the top all the way across until I get to this dot, okay? There's a dot. Let me bring it closer so you can see. All right, right here, there's a dot. I'm hoping you can see my dot right here. So basically I'm gonna sew from the top all the way to the dot, and then I'm going to pivot and then sew straight off. So basically it's gonna come at an angle, 5 8 of an inch, all the way down to this dot, and then I'm gonna pivot, still remaining at 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, and then sew straight off. Now I'm gonna show you this at the sewing machine so you're not confused. Once I do that, I'm gonna clip to my dot, but not clip through my stitching, all right? Press my seam allowance towards my pocket and then understitch. So I'm gonna show you how we're going to do this pocket so you do not get confused, all right? So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my fabric lined up with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, that's right here on my machine. You probably can't see that, but I have it lined up with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna go ahead and put my presser, my needle down and my presser foot, I'm going to remove the pin, and then I'm going to backstitch at the beginning. I'm starting at the dot right here. I'm going to backstitch. Make sure you are using 2.5 inch uh, length stitch, so regular length stitch, 2.5, and then we're going, going to backstitch. And then just sew at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way to the end. Now I'm at the top of my shorts. So I started at the bottom, at the dot, and I'm sewing to the top. So now that I'm getting towards the top, I'm gonna back stitch. Use my scissors on my machine, cut the thread, lift my presser foot, and this is what it looks like, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and trim it down. Now before you trim it down, because I started trimming it down and I forgot to tell you guys this, that at this dot right here, which is, this is the top, this is that dot that's towards the side, you were to pivot off, so I did not pivot, so what I'm gonna do is put my presser, my needle and my presser foot, and I'm going to pivot and sew straight off, okay? Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and trim it down. I'm gonna trim it down on camera. Well, first I'm gonna clip into my dot, without clipping through the dot right here. So let me see if you can see that right here. I just clipped through to the dot without clipping through my dot. Now I am going to go ahead and trim it down. Okay, so now I have it trimmed down, but I have a little peak right here, okay? Now, what you wanna do is go ahead and press your seam allowance towards your pocket and then we're going to edge stitch. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my seam allowance pressed towards my pocket, that's what you see right here, it's pressed towards my pocket. Now we're gonna go ahead and understitch. Now, you want to understitch on your pocket, which is what you're seeing here on 
my right side, all right? And then we're just going to understitch. So I'm gonna backstitch at the beginning. You're gonna start at the dot and then just understitch as close as possible all the way up to the top. When you get to the top, you want to backstitch, cut your thread, and that's it. All right, so now that I have the pockets on and understitched, the next thing you're gonna do is fold the pockets onto itself like so. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and stitch the bottom portion of your pocket. So basically you want to fold the pocket onto itself like you see here. Now I'm gonna flip it over just like this. And I'm just going to pin the pocket, the bottom portion of the pocket. Now, make sure you are matching up your notches. So you have a notch right here, pin right there, and then pin along the bottom portion of your pocket. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have it pinned at the bottom using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna backstitch at the beginning and sew along your pocket and backstitch right here at the end. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and finish off your seam allowance. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my pockets at the bottom sewn on to itself, I finished off my seam allowance. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and fold your pockets in, right? So it's gonna form a facing. And you have a dot on your pattern piece number five, which is your, your front and then you have a dot on your pocket. Now this is my dot right here. I'm just gonna match that up and pin at the top. And then make sure your pleat is also pressed in and you're going to make sure that it is flat at the top and you're going to pin across the top to make sure that your pocket is in place. All right. After you pin at the top, making sure everything is flat, I'm gonna turn it to the side so you can see. You're, you also have a dot right here. You're gonna ma match that dot to this dot right here. And you're gonna pin, making sure that your pockets are flat. You do not want any puckering going on for your uh, front or your pockets, okay? Not a good look pin at your side seam and all you're going to do is base the pocket onto the front right here at the side seam and right here at the top. So go ahead and baste across now. All right, so now that I have my pocket sewn on, I based it across the top and the side. It looks good. You have a pocket that you can put your hands in. It's also finished on the inside. You want it clean on the inside, clean on the outside. If you know the song, you get the reference. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is grab pattern piece number seven, which is your back. That's why I told you to go ahead and do your darts. If you have not done your dart in the back of your pant or your shorts, and it looks like this, go ahead and do that. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and stitch the inseams of your pants or your pocket. So go ahead and pin at that notch, pin at the top, pin at the bottom and then pin, make, put some more pins if you need to along the inseam of your pants or your shorts now. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I like starting at the hem portion and then going to the top. So using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, sew your inseam and then finish off your inseam with your serger, pink and shears, folding it over, however you finish off your seams. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my inseam sewn, this is what it looks like. I went ahead and pressed my seam allowance towards the back. That's the pattern piece that has the dart. All right, so now with right sides together, we're gonna stitch our crotch seam. So go ahead and grab the other pant. So with right sides together, so what you're looking at, I'm gonna turn it so I could work better, but on my left side, while you're looking at this, I have my front pattern piece. On my right side, I have my back pattern pieces, okay? So what we're gonna do is sew up the crotch curve, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pin at my 
center crotch curve, right? I'm gonna pin there making sure that my seam allowance, my seams match, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it and pin the front, making sure I match up my notches and my dots, okay? So go ahead and pin all the way around your crotch curve now. All right, so now that my crotch curve is pinned, Starting at the beginning using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning, so along this entire crotch curve and backstitch at the end. Once you do that, go ahead and finish off your crotch curve. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my crotch seam sewn and finished off, what we're gonna do is open out your pants right sides together. So this is my front, and I'm going to place my back right over my front, just like this, okay? Now, this is completely up to you. Determine which side you want your zipper on. Now, me personally, because I'm right-handed, I want my zipper on the right side when wearing it, okay? Now, what I highly advise you to do is put your, pad, your uh, front up to you See which side is your right side when wearing it, okay? So put it just like this. This is the right side of my fabric. I'm putting it up to me to check and see what side I want it on. Well, me personally, I want mine on this side, so I'm just gonna put a pin there. And then I'm going to do right sides together. Let's make sure. Right sides together, I'm gonna put, this is the back laying on the table, facing up, and then I'm gonna put my front with the pockets on top, all right? Now I know what side I want my zipper on, which is the right side when wearing it, okay? So I have a pin on that side, which tells me that I'm going to leave this side open, but I'll talk to you guys about that here shortly. So whatever side you do not want your zipper on, you're gonna pin the side seam all the way up, all right? So let's go ahead. I'm gonna turn it this way. So this is my left side when wearing it. So I'm going to go ahead and pin the entire side seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and match up the notch, pin. I'm gonna pin at the bottom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pin at the top and then pin the length of that side seam. So go ahead and pin the side seam now. All right, so now that I have this side pinned, now on the side that you want your zipper to be on, now for me, because I'm right hand, it's going to be on the right side. If you are doing yours on the left side, you would do the opposite. You would leave the left side open but the right side pin it and you're going to sew all the way through all right now the zipper that you need is a seven inch zipper now to be honest with you i don't have a seven inch zipper so we're going to see how long mine is mine's is about 12 inches we're just going to cut it off because i'm going to use what's in my stash and i do not have a black zipper to begin with in my stash so we're just going to use this a nice a lovely old white zipper it'll Hey, it's part of the fabric, so who cares at this point, right? So what I'm gonna do is pin at that notch, and then there is a dot right here. So I'm gonna pin at that dot. Now for me, I'm going to leave this top portion open for a second, and I'm just going to pin the bottom portion of my um, pants, all right? Now, one thing I wanna mention while I'm pinning is at that dot on the side where you're going to be sewing in your zipper, I advise you to put two pins there. So I'm going to put another pin right here because it'll symbolize that this is the zipper, okay? And then I'm gonna put a couple of more pins on this side. Now, this is a personal preference. I don't like my pant zippers to just have seven inches. I like for them to have nine inches. So what I'm gonna do is right at that this uh, area, I'm going to go down two more inches to give me a little bit more room, all right? 
So even though I'm gonna go ahead and pin it up, I'm gonna tell you what you're going to do to this side here shortly. So I'm just pinning all the way up to the top. So what I'm gonna do is even though it has a dot right here, I'm going to mark another dot about two inches down. So let me grab my tape measure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from that dot down two inches to give it nine inches minimum, right? To give me more room to unzip my pants. And I'm gonna mark right here. And this is going to be my new stopping point. So I'm just gonna take that out and make this pen right here. And that's where I'm gonna stop and baste up, okay? So what I'm gonna do on this side where my zipper is, I'm gonna start at my hem, and I'm gonna sew using a regular length stitch. I'm gonna back stitch at my hem, so all the way up to the dot. Now, if you just want seven inches, by all means, sew all the way up to the seven inch dot. But if you wanna do like I'm doing and do nine inches, go from the hem to that two inch down from the original dot, you're gonna back stitch there, switch to a basting stitch and baste that portion closed, all right? Now on the other side where you do not have your zipper, you're going to sew the entire uh, side seam from the hem all the way up and then finish it off. Now one thing I wanna mention before you go and sew your side seam, the portion, the side where you have your zipper, I advise you to finish that off now separately <laughs> and then sew that side seam. On the other side, you can sew it together or separately, it's up to you. I'm gonna sew it together, all right? So go ahead and sew your side seams now. All right, so I went ahead and sewn my side seam. This is the front of my pants, that's why you see pockets. I'm looking up, this is the wrong side though. So this is the inside, it looks really good. I have my zipper in on the right side. Um, I pressed my seams open. Um, this part down here is sewn together in one, uh, with the serger together. I went ahead and I stabilized my zipper area. If you have not seen any of my tutorials with a zipper, Every zipper I stabilize with interfacing. So that's just interfacing right here um, on my zipper area. It just makes the zipper go up and down easier for me. It's a personal preference, just FYI. I went ahead and based my zipper on. Now, if you have not seen me do a zipper, I have done a zipper so many times on this channel. So just go back to one of my videos where I showed the installation of how I do zippers. Now I'm gonna kinda show you this portion um, on, I all I did, so basically just to give you a recap on the zipper, I'm not gonna walk you through how to do an invisible zipper, but all I did was I pressed my seams open and then put my zipper. Now you see how this is the wrong side, this needs to be up. The right side of the zipper, I'm gonna bring it, needs to be facing down and you're gonna place the zipper in the, on the center seam line. All it is is basted. So this is basted, like I said before, put the zipper down, sew on both sides using a basting stitch. Now what I'm gonna do is turn it right side out. And what I'm gonna do is open up that zipper area. So, all I'm gonna do is go from the top and open up the zipper area. Now you have basting stitch, so just open it up all the way until you get to the bottom when there's where the regular length stitch starts. Being careful not to make holes in your garment. So go ahead and open up that zipper area now. All right, so now that I have it, have the um, basting stitch, open. Now I'm going to check my zipper to make sure it zips up and down with no problems, but make sure you clear um, your thread, clean up your threads for your basting stitch. And then right here, I'm going to check my zipper to make sure it zips up on the side of my pants or shorts, whichever one you're making um, with no issues whatsoever. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sewing machine 
and as close to the, using a, you could use a uh, invisible zipper foot, you could use just the foot that comes on your machines. You're gonna close, so as close to the coils as possible, stitching, using a regular length stitch, um, without stitching on your zipper teeth, you're gonna stitch it in place, all right? So go ahead and stitch a, a permanent stitch on your zipper now to finish off your zipper. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my zipper in place, it zips up nicely with no problems. At this point, I highly advise you to go ahead and try on your shorts or your pants, whichever one you made, um, to make sure to test for fit. fit. Now, here's my thing. I don't know everyone's sizes, so it's kind of hard for me to tell you if you need to go up in the hips. If your crotch need to be dropped, only you would know that. Um, so try it on and see how it fits for you and then make those adjustments accordingly. Um, if you are having issues with pants, a lot of like sagging or whatever, I know um, you can learn a lot of pants fitting. A good book is, um, Fitting Pants, I think it's by Nancy Zimmerman. She talks how you could, you know, how to take the bagginess out of the front, the back, and all those good things and how to do lines or whatever. I'll put it up on the screen of the book that I am referring to as well. Now that I talked about all of that with books and everything, let's go ahead and sew on the facing. Now, your facing will look a little different than mine when it comes to attaching. If you are putting your facing on the left side, you will have your zipper on this side. Whereas if you are putting your zipper like me on the right side, your zipper will be on this side. Pay close attention, all right? So I'm gonna be working with the front, which is my front facing, pattern piece number nine, all right? And what I'm gonna do, now I have already pinned, what you wanna do is open it out, right sides together, and you want to put a pin on the side that your zipper is on, okay? So, for me, I put a pin on this side because I know when I attach my front, my zipper is on this side, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is the same thing goes for the back. When I open up my back pattern piece, and I did mark front and back on my, um, on the facing pieces, so I know which one is the front, which one is the back. When I open this up for the back, if you notice, my back is pinned as well. So do the same thing, because what happens is, with right sides together, right, you are going to be sewing the opposite side of where you put the pins, okay? Now, for me, if I have, basically I have pattern piece number 10 on top of pattern piece number nine, and I'm gonna sew the left side. If you are doing your zipper on the left side instead of the right side, you're gonna have pattern piece number 10 on pattern piece number nine, and sew the right side instead of the left side closed. I hope that makes sense for you but this is what it looks like. This is pattern piece number 10. My zipper is on the right side. So I'm basically going to um, sew up the right side because what happens is when I pin right sides together, this side is going to be right at my side seams, okay? So that's why you need to make sure you know what side your zipper is on because you don't wanna have to unpick, all right? Now, what you're gonna do is sew this um, side seam closed using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end and press your seam allowance open. After you do that, at the very bottom, now I'm going to use bias tape, but you can just serge it if you decide. You're gonna uh, finish off the bottom edge of your um, facing, all right? So go ahead and do both of those things now. All right, so now that I have my face in sewn on my pattern piece number nine, which is my front, to my pattern piece number 10, like I've mentioned, I also 
put bias. Now this is just the black fabric from my vest. I made my own bias tape um, to give a little bit of contrast and detail to the bottom of my facing. You can do the same thing. You can use purchase bias tape or you could just finish off the bottom how you choose, all right? Now go ahead and grab your pants or your shorts. And what you're going to do is attach your facing right sides together to your shorts. Now it's going to extend past your zipper. Do not be alarmed by it, all right? So first things first, you wanna match up your side seams. So I'm gonna match up my side seam. Make sure that the side seam on your shorts are facing the back of the pants or shorts. And then you're gonna pin there. Now you're going to pin all the way around your upper portion of your shorts and you're facing to your shorts, matching up all dots, notches, and your side seams, okay? So go ahead and pin all the way around now. All right, so I pinned my front, I am now pinning my back, so I'm going to make sure that those two notches in the back match up, and I'm going to pin, and then I'm just going to pin all the way around to the zipper tape. So go ahead and pin now. All right, so now that I have the back pin, the facing pinned onto both the back and the front, Using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna start at the side seam, so the back, and then start back at the side seam, and so the front, all right? Using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Once you sew all the way around the top portion of your shorts, trim it down, and then under stitch. You're going to be under stitching on the facing and then after you understitch, you're going to go ahead and sew down where you're just from the top to the bottom, um, as close to the teeth as possible without sewing on the teeth to finish it off, all right? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so I, I went ahead and attached my facing. This is what it looks like. Um, I went ahead and trimmed it down. I understitch, so that's why I have clean finishes on my zipper area right here as well. Um, I Like I told you, I already put like some contrast on the black. Now, I'm gonna get the instructions. I'm gonna bring them so you could see the next step. I don't even know what number we are on because you guys know I have sewn so many pairs of pants, so I know the construction of pants like nobody's business, but we are currently at step number 22, top stitch garment, one and a half inch from upper edge through all thicknesses, ending just over the zipper tape. All right, so I know like you guys are like, yo Rochelle, I hate looking at instructions. I prefer you to just do a sew along and we're good, all right? <laughs> all right, so listen you guys, probably reading it, you don't understand what it's talking about, then maybe you understand what it's talking about, but what is, what, that means is you're going to top stitch all the way around at one and a half inch seam allowance, but you're going to stop. I think it said a half an inch or right before. It says ending just over zipper tape. So basically, um, make sure you do not go over the zipper tape. I would stop like literally right here, right? before you get to the zipper tape to make sure that it's not bouncing up. Now, one thing I'm going to do before I start sewing is I'm going to go ahead and add in my label on the back of my pants, just somewhere in the back. Now, I could add it at the back seam, which is where I'm going to be adding in my label. So when you see these, these shorts, you're gonna see a label there. Um, that's what I'm gonna do before I go ahead and top stitch. Now, you see pens on the inside of my shorts instead of the outside. And the reason why is because I'm going to base mine. Now I know that I'm not doing a inch and a half, and there's a reason why. I want my shorts to, my facing to completely be stitched down. So I think for me, I'm going to do two inches. So I'm gonna measure, yes, I'm gonna be doing two inches instead of 
one and a half, like the instruction says. Now I'm going to base close to the top portion of this um, bias binding tape that I made. I'm going to base as close as possible. Then I will flip my um, shorts over and then top stitch above that to give me a little bit more room. So basically I will eventually be sewing about one and seven, 1.75 or one and three fourths inch all the way around to give it some top stitching. All right. After I top stitch my front, my edge, if you are not doing the carrier, the only thing you need to do is hem your pants, um, your pants or your shorts. Now I think the hem is one and one fourth. Let me grab the pattern piece. So yes, so it, the hem is one and one fourth. So all you're going to do is, what I'm gonna do is just surge all the way around, press up one and one fourth, and then sew on the right side all the way around to enclose it, and then, I am done with my shorts. Now, if you want to add the carrier, go ahead and top stitch and then we'll go ahead and do the carrier. Now I'm gonna show you how to kind of, you know, put one on. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to uh, put all the carriers on mine, but I could show you how to do one and you could continue doing the rest of it by yourself and then hem your shorts and you'll be done, all right? So let's go ahead and top stitch first all the way around your shorts and then we'll go ahead and make our carriers. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and finished off my top all the way around. It is looking really nice. So if you do not want to do the carriers and you already finished off your hem, you are all done, but for my my uh, interest in friends who wants to do the carrier, first move your shorts or your pants out of the way, grab your carrier, which you cut one, okay? Now, I don't know why I have two, but you only need one, all right? And then what we're gonna do is with right sides together, I'm just gonna move this one out of my way. And with right sides together, what we're going to do is fold it in half. So we're just gonna fold it in half like this. Now I'm gonna press mine before sewing it, but I'm just gonna pin right now. I'll press it in a minute, but just go ahead and pin all the way across now. All right, so now that I have the carrier's the carrier pin using three eighths of an inch seam allowance. We're gonna sew across the top um, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Once you do that, you're going to turn it right sides out and give it a, well, after you sew three eighths of an inch seam allowance, trim it down, turn it right side out, and then give it a good press. After you give it a good press, you're going to edge stitch both long edges, all right? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and sewn the carriers right side together, so the long edge, edge, three eighths of an inch seam allowance, trimmed it down, turned it right side out, top stitched at about a fourth of an inch to give it some details, you see that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make, it says in the instructions to make um, five, five carriers, right? So two in the front and then three at the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my marking tool and I'm going to mark three and a quarter um, seam allowance. So I could definitely, um, so I'm going to mark three and a quarter all the way across. So go ahead and do that now. Now I have made one, I have actually done two, so I'm just gonna cut at three and a quarter, and then I'm just gonna use that as my guide and cut again for a total of five. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now I have all five of my carrier pieces. Now I'm going, now I'm going to grab my Shorts, if you have pants, pants for you. 
And where you're going to put your carriers at are, now I'm looking at the front of my pants, you're going to put, put them where the pleats are, okay? Right here where the pleats are. In the back, you're going to put two where the darts are right here and then one at the center back, all right? So that's where you're gonna put your carrier. Now I'm gonna do one at the center back just to show you, I'm just gonna pin it and you're going to do it yourself. So what you wanna do is you want to put the first one at the center back. You want to go about, you want to pin where the dots are, but you want to go five, eight, seven inch seam allowance above the dot. You're going to stitch across, trim down to about three eighths. After you sew that, you're just going to take it, fold it up, and then attach it at the top. So it's going to look like this. I'm hoping you, you could see this, okay? So I'm gonna explain one more time. Take your, uh, take the wrong side, okay? Take the wrong side of your uh, carrier. So you wanna do right sides together, pin it about a five eighths of, five eighths of an inch above the dot that's there at the center back. I'm going to pin. You're gonna to go to the sewing machine, make sure you're only sewing on that on the back, not the front. Sew across five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, then you're gonna trim it down. After you trim it down to tack it on, you're gonna fold in five eighths of an inch seam allowance at the top and then you're going to sew it to the top, just like that, okay? And just top stitch right there, all right? You're gonna do that to all five of your carriers if you want the carriers on. Now, me personally, I don't want the carriers on after looking at it because you're not gonna be able to see it. Um, I might put it on, but probably won't use them, but that's how you do your carriers. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the bottom. And once you do that, you are all done. Well, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. And if you make the shorts, do not forget to tag me on Instagram at rochelle.handmadedesign. Or even if you make the vest or the entire set, <laughs> lack thereof, right? If you make Butterick 6901, do not forget to tag me on Instagram at rochelle.handmade.designs. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. All right, so there you have it. That's the complete pattern review and the sew along. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you make this pattern, do not forget to tag me on Instagram at rochelle.handmade.designs. So I hope to see you in the next sew along, which I already dropped what the next sew along will be, but if you missed it because you was not listening, it will be a Butterick pattern. I'll go ahead and put it up on the screen. So there you have it. That is the next sew along as well. So stay tuned for that. That should be dropping here in a week. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and since you made it this far, do not forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and also smash that notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video, and as always, keep sewing. I remember, I don't forget, bitch, I'm everywhere in town. Think I'm at the ways to get my bread up. Trying to see the train, we was up. I got no resentment, no vendetta Yeah, she told me up because I let her Bet I eat that ball like it's a setup Pussy trippin' down on the stilettos They don't want the silence I've been overseas, looking on us They lookin' at me, choosing violence Yeah, keep it on the low You know that's the code Okay, baby, that's the code You already know Got a bad bitch from the 902 and 0 Stacking all these anthems and I'm only 24 I'ma make them dance, yeah, cushion my advance, yeah I hate all that fake shit on the surface in my soul, yeah I can feel my heart